I don't think the casting at the end is strange. The error was complaining that you are doing the bit operations on 32-bit int with the 64-bit int. As far as I remember from my OpenGL days, we always casted Python ints as 32-bit ints, as Python ints are always 64 ints, uh, bits, and OpenGL uses 32 by default. Yeah, um, fair point. So that's true. The reason I said it was a strange operation is that in compiled languages, when you put in an integer literal, that integer literal is generally automatically cast to whatever the appropriate data size would be. If we know that we've got an array of 32-bit ints and we're taking a bitwise operation with an integer literal, I would assume that the compiler would see that and infer the type. But it could be a little different because under the hood we're calling a numpy operation which may not be as strict. I think your selection of topics are excellent, interesting and fundamental to game development. I'm a bit confused as to why you demonstrate in Python when the main languages in the games industry are C Sharp and C++. As far as I know, Python is not considered a desirable skill in most game and graphics programming jobs. Yeah, you know, that's a fair point. The short response is, number one, limitation breeds creativity. So personally, I find it a lot of fun to work with Python because it was not meant for this sort of stuff, but I can bend the thing to make it work in a different way. That's fun. And secondly, the APIs and the concepts are independent of the language in which they're implemented. Look, I know you have your reasons for calling this a software rendering series, but software rendering is generally understood to mean a specific thing in the world of computer graphics. So you're going to end up confusing a lot of people with your video title. I came here looking for a video about software rasterization and YouTube recommended it, knowing I'm interested in that topic, but I was ultimately misled. Okay, well, thank you for the feedback and I'm sorry that you felt misled. I would accept the point that performing a bitwise operation on a NumPy array, although it gets the job done, is not necessarily doing things from first principles. In that sense, I cleared the screen, but not in a rasterized way. However, I will have to strongly challenge the notion that this is not software rendering, because there's a difference between rendering and presenting the result to the screen. So I'm using OpenGL, but I'm using OpenGL as a means of presenting an image to a screen. I'm pretty sure I made that clear in the video that we've got a backend which uses OpenGL, but we're not going to be touching it. I'm not modifying that backend throughout the series. It's the same thing. It's just a library, an external library. And I don't understand. Like if I were to use Pygame and set it pixel by pixel, that uses the graphics card, ultimately. Is the, where is the threshold at which this is acceptable? Is it just that it's fine to use a third party library? I just have to not write it myself and then it counts as software rendering? I don't understand. Um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. As I, as I dig more into the algorithms, you'll see that Yes, in fact, we are doing this on the CPU. It's just that we're using OpenGL as a means of delivering the final rendered image to the screen. I agree with this. Software rendering is typically understood as being CPU rendered and much slower than hardware rendering on the GPU, which this video is about. So again, this video is not about hardware rendering on the GPU. This code library is using the GPU as an image presentation mechanism, but it's not rendering. The rendering is occurring on the CPU. Alrighty, so welcome back, software rendering. In this video, we're going to be setting pixels. Now, what I've got is for my frame buffer, I've got a, a NumPy array of numbers where every number represents the color of that corresponding pixel. We could have done this as a two-dimensional NumPy array, but I'm gonna be using a flat memory layout. In other words, even though it represents a two-dimensional array, 
of pixels, those elements are stored in a single array. So then the question is, which routine can we use to unpack or to store, you know, to represent a two-dimensional array with a one-dimensional array? There are two major approaches. One is to simply run all the pixels from left to right until we reach the end of the screen, and then that some region in the one-dimensional array, and then beyond that, we'll wrap around to the next scan line. Um, this is called row major order. And if we access sequential memory locations, that's a very fast operation. So with this system, drawing horizontal lines will be really fast because of cache. On the other hand, we could have a column major layout where we sort of, as we run across our flat array, we're actually running down our screen with a series of vertical lines. And then when we reach the bottom of the line, wrap around to the top of the next line and so on. This is called column major. And this, in this system, vertical lines are fast. So out of these two, I'm going to go with column major. And the reason is at a later point in time, if I want to make Wolfenstein or something like that, then I'll be mostly drawing vertical lines. Also, out of curiosity, there's another ordering system called Morton order or Z curves or space filling curves. And in this case, we sort of fill out in an expanding pattern. And this is really good if you want to fill areas of the screen at once. But I'm not going to go with that for this system. So, column major. Given an xy coordinate for a pixel on the screen, where x equals 0 is right up on the left, y equals 0 is right up at the top, how do we get the corresponding index within that flat array. So if we look at this column major array, let's go column zero, one, two. Okay, let's say we're in column two. To be in row two of column two, we would have to have skipped through two columns. And what's the size of each column? The height of the screen. And so what I'm saying here is if we take the x coordinate, multiply it by the height of the screen, that will get us to the beginning of the screen column in which we want to draw. And then if we add on the y coordinate, that'll drop us down to that y coordinate within the column that we want to draw. So let's see this in practice. All right, so I'm going to make a function which I'll call set pixel first up I'm going to need to calculate the pixel address within the color buffer and I'll do that again by taking the x coordinate multiplying it by the height of the screen and then dropping down so adding the y coordinate then I'm going to access the corresponding element within the color buffer, so I'll use that as an index. And finally, I will set that element to the color. So now to test this out, I'll go down to my engine. And in my render frame, my draw frame function, I'm just going to define a few colors. I'll just go with the canonical red, green, blue. And then I'm just going to call that set pixel function. For instance, let's say we want to set the top left pixel to red. I'm not going to do the top left. That's a little hard to see. I'm going to go with a margin of 32 pixels. So 32 pixels off the left, 32 pixels off the top of the screen. And I'm also going to need to pass in the screen height. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and set the top. Actually, let me just test this. So this might be very, very hard to see. So I'm just going to set that clear color off to black. Hopefully that will help a little. But this pixel is very small. Okay, 
So I'm not sure if you can see it, but the pixel is right about here. I'm pointing to it right now. But there it is. It's 32 pixels off the left, 32 pixels off the top. Now I'll go ahead and set the top right pixel green. So screen width will be all the way on the right. Just want to step that back by 32 pixels. So I think this might be coming up a little better. Green is a more visible color, but here we've got our green pixel there. And then I'm going to set the bottom right to blue. Cool. So again, screen height would be all the way down at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to step it up, step it away by 32 pixels. Okay. This is a very hard to see color, but it, it's about down here. All right. So here we've looked at how to fetch the appropriate location within the color buffer, within a flat array, to write some pixels. And we've also had a look at the conventions for screen coordinates. Let me just go ahead, we'll have some fun. So I'm going to draw some static, a whole bunch of white pixels. We'll go for... 1,024 samples, I guess. For each of these, we're going to pick out a random X and Y. Just like that. Give that a go. There we have it. Nice. A whole bunch of stuff. Now, see that we're our performance has gone down considerably. So let's see if we can speed this up a little. We can probably, probably assume that the numbers will never be negative. Anyway, there we have it. So turns out that has not significantly increased the speed that's okay. The speed decrease in this case could be due to the fact that Python is handling the loop rather than you know, having that loop out in another, in another function like draw static or something, which itself is compiled. But I am going to keep this set pixel function compiled. And the reason for that, as I said in the previous video, is if we have other code which is compiled, then everything that it calls has to be compiled and I'm going to be using this set pixel function for line drawing routines, shape drawing routines and other things. Okay, so I guess, yeah, that's our little demo. So congrats, we are done. As the next step, we'll be looking at vertical and horizontal lines. I hope to see you there. Bye.